Okay, testing and welcome to everybody who is joining me on Facebook in just a second and also to everybody who is now on Periscope and Twitter and looking again at some fairly quiet conditions for us, but unfortunately it looks like these things are going to be changing as we go into the course of the next couple of days, unfortunately, so we'll be watching for more on that coming up in just a little bit. Sorry about the echo there. We'll get this taken care of here in just a little bit. In the meantime, thanks for joining us and watching what's going on here on our current video weather blog, Weather Overtime. We continue again to see the possibility of some more shower and thunderstorm potential for the Mid-South as what's left of Harvey begins to get a little bit closer to us. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit, and that is going to be having a decent effect on our chances for rainfall here, depending on which direction that storm goes. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Thanks to everybody joining me on Periscope and Twitter right now, and thanks to everybody for joining me on Facebook from facebook.com slash austinonicwreg. We'll talk more about other social media places you can go to for more details, again, including the wreg.com slash weather page. My email address in the blue bar up there, just above my head and again watching on Monday night beginning to see again uh, the possibility of some more areas of showers and thunderstorms out there which could be causing a little bit more of a problem looks like Facebook is starting to have some problems yet again not entirely too sure why that is we've got plenty of tin foil on the receivers for tonight in the meantime we'll wait for as of right now the possibility of getting into some more uh, problems out there with, again, what's left of uh, Harvey heading up this direction. That could be just a bit of a problem for us uh, in the near future. So again, this is going to be something we're going to have to watch out for as we head into the course of the next couple of days. So if you have any plans for, again, outdoors across much of the area, yeah, I had a feeling about that. Okay, switching networks right now and seeing if this is going to work. It should. I don't know why it's not. And as of right, well, live netcasting. There you go, unfortunately. So we'll give this another try and see what goes on. And if you're still with us, thank you very much. Gremlins in the system does seem to happen uh, all the time at this point. So we'll just have to try this again without anybody in there. While you were sitting here waiting for our Facebook friends to join us, let's go ahead and take a look at radar right now and show you more about what's going on out across the Mid-South. Doesn't really amount to much at this time, and again, things are pretty decently quiet. What you're seeing over the Mississippi River, that slash right in the middle of your screen, is of course just insect activity and humidity taking place across much of the Mid-South. There's really just not that much out there where it comes to anything involving uh, rainfall, especially after leftover from the thunderstorms that we had over the course of the rest of the day today. So really just not that much to see for right now, but again, could be looking at some more problems for rainfall into the course of the next uh, couple of days. If you have any plans for outdoors, that is going to be a bit of a concern, but we'll talk more about that coming up here again in just a little bit. So far, again, very quiet, but very humid out there, and more chances for rainfall will be sneaking back into the forecast as we get into the rest of the next couple of days. So, so far, that's what we're going to be seeing the major problems with here in just a little bit. Let's try once again to see what What's going on with Facebook? Apologies for this happening, but unfortunately this is what goes on both in television stations and across uh, the internet, unfortunately. And unfortunately also they're moving a lot of the keys around, so I don't know exactly if this is going to work or not, but let's give this a try. Anyway, all right, we are back on Facebook, I think, for the time being. Whether or not we stay there, we should be breaking down in about three, two, one. Okay, fine. Make a liar out of me. Okay, well, for tonight, if you are with us, great. If you're not, just knock on the camera lens and we'll see if we can get you hooked up here for more information as to uh, what's going on out across the Mid-South. If you're just joining us on Facebook for right now, again, we've got a lot to talk about as the forecast has decently changed within the course of the last couple of days. What's left of Harvey causing catastrophic, incredible flooding down around portions of the Gulf of Mexico and down toward Houston. Oh, good. Thank you very much. My wife, Melissa, checking in from the other room, my technical support for right now, and my PR firm very much. Thank, thank you very much on that. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Great to work with her, really. Okay, for the next couple of minutes, if you have any questions about the forecast, please drop them into the comments section or you know technical support like we just got from the other room. That's great. Uh, as of right now, we're going to be seeing again the possibility. And by the way, welcome to everybody who's just joining us. Again, we are live on Facebook, Twitter, and Periscope, keeping you up to date as to what's going on, technical issues notwithstanding. And again, we'll be talking a little bit more about what's going to be happening with the arrival of Harvey or what's left of it in the next couple of days. One 
to reiterate at this point that again, as these storms, as they cross over the land surface, they lose a lot of their power. So we are not, and I repeat, not going to be seeing anything in the way of major damage from winds from this. It's going to be barely a tropical depression by the time it arrives, but it is going to have an effect on our forecast, and we'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit. Uh, going back to radar for a second, again, what you're looking at here is, again, the information on screen showing, again, uh, the what's forming over the Mississippi River right now, downtown Memphis, down toward the bottom portion of your screen, right about in there. And if you look over the Mississippi River, the radar beam is catching some pretty intense activity that is not moving any place, and that is the development of both fog, steam, mist, whatever you want to call it at this time of the night, and it's also developing a decent amount of cover for insects. They become a lot more active at this time. That's also birds out there as well, so there's a lot of activity in and around uh, portions of the Mid-South area where it comes to just a little bit of insect activity, but beyond that, we don't have much of anything happening here. Now back to the north and west of us, we do have some more thunderstorms popping up into and around northeast Arkansas, and that is drifting to the south, Imboden, Pocahontas, it looks like Cherokee Village south of Thayer, and Koshkanong in Missouri is picking up some scattered light shower activities out there for this evening. Uh, Susan Barati Epps, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for tuning in. Bozo Wolfolk from Senatobia. We will be getting some rainfall. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Diane Wingo from Colt, Arkansas. Farah Tanil, hope I'm saying that correctly. Welcome to the show as well. Let's go ahead and see what's going on. Again, nothing on approach from from Harvey at this point in time. We're just not seeing anything coming up from the Gulf of Mexico as of right now, but we will be watching that to see if we do get anything else. We're going to go ahead and get started tonight again with the National Hurricane Center. Usually we show a little bit more in the way of all kinds of fun stuff, webcams, what the weather's like on Mars, all kinds of stuff like that. We're not going to do that tonight because we got uh, entirely too much to talk about at this point in time. We're going to be seeing again the possibility of more problems down into the Gulf of Mexico and maybe a little bit further beyond that. Now Tropical Depression 10 in the East Coast area of the United States. We've been monitoring this throughout the last couple of days and the good news on this is that Hurricane hunters have investigated this and a lot of readings taken out of this storm. The good news is, as of this time, it does not appear to be a threat for anything involving a major development. So from Georgia up through, say, New York, it's not a threat at this time. Matter of fact, it seems to be losing cohesion and strength. So that's good news for the time being. But this thing could develop into something, uh, possibly Tropical Storm Irma. That's I-R-M-A. So if you're named Irma, you're up next. And this could be making its way out into portions of the Atlantic. Now, way out into the Atlantic, right off the coast of Africa, we do have another disturbance taking place. You can see that on screen again on the right-hand side of your screen, right off the Cape Verde Islands. And that could show uh, the possibility of developing. It's been a good season for long track storms to make their way all the way across from Africa, right off the Sahel, and making their way into the Caribbean or the eastern portions of the Gulf or the western Atlantic. So this could be our next system that we are going to be watching, again, very, very carefully. Now, where 10 is concerned at this time, possibly, again, Irma, there does not seem to be too much of anything in the way of a concern with this making its way anywhere soon close to us. It looks like it's going to be arcing out and into the western Atlantic and quite possibly getting stronger. So I would be not be surprised if we saw Tropical Storm Irma by the time we got into around uh, tonight, late, or tomorrow morning at some point in time. Uh, Becky Cody, Do Cody Donaldson, welcome to the show from West Memphis. Thank you for stopping by and watching the show. Diane Wingo, thank you very much for your very nice words. Joy Tapper from South Haven, thank you very much for joining us. Diane Wingo, how much rain will we get? That's the question of the day, and we'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Let's take a look and see where this thing is going. Again, the best possibility for tropical storm force winds are going to be going way off the coast of the United States, and this thing is going to be heading out just off the Atlantic coastline over the Gulf Stream, and that's not good news in the sense that it's going to pick up a lot more warm energy. The Gulf of Mexico has been warm like your bathtub water, and we're talking like 85, 90 degree temperatures out there, and that's very good for development or redevelopment of tropical storms. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. In the meantime, 10 and or Irma, if it goes that far, does not look to be a threat. It looks to be hugging the coastline for a while, and then it's going to be Iceland's problem. 
problem within the course of the next couple of days. Now, talking about Harvey, a just um, incredible disaster where rainfall is concerned down into the Gulf of Mexico. Absolutely huge amounts of rainfall. 1,000 year flooding. Heard that term being kicked around a lot over the course of the last couple of days. Scientists are going to be studying this one for a year, and I would not be surprised if Harvey gets retired as a name anytime soon. And this is apparently, if current indications are to be believed, more rainfall by a factor of two or three than ever fell across Katrina and the New Orleans area during 2005. And that is sheer, just starkly incredible to, to behold when something like that occurs. And again, this is mainly due to the fact that the storm has been not driven any place, no winds in the upper atmosphere pushing this thing along, which does happen. What we're looking at is, again, the storm sitting in place. It's moved less than 100 miles in the last two to three days. That's incredible because usually these things can cover thousands of miles in about a week or so. What we're expecting as we get into the course, and pardon me for bumping the camera a little bit, my fingers interfering with things here, uh, the storm is going to be again right off the coast and is in fact going right off the coastline. It's going to be right into the Gulf of Mexico right again. This is not good news for two reasons. Number one, again, it could re-energize here, and it could be a bit of a problem, more of a problem as more of that rain gets pushed right on shore again, back up into and around the Houston metro area, exactly what they don't need right now. If you have any plans to travel by air, rail, road, or anything else, Call ahead to check your destination. Traffic is just absolutely a nightmare down that direction. Uh, my own cousin, Anita Parker, and her family, mandatory evacuation in her neighborhood. Not sure exactly where that is in relation to Houston proper, but if she's getting it ordered to evacuate, she's a nurse with a hospital system down there. Uh, this is what we're going to be seeing again with more rainfall possible down uh, that direction. Billy Franklin, welcome from Lexington, Tennessee. Thanks for joining us. Victoria Fondren uh, in the Sarah Strayhorn area. We'll talk more about the forecast for you in just a little bit. Now the S on here stands for tropical storm. It could be a tropical storm through Wednesday afternoon. This thing is just not quitting. It's absolutely incredible. Now by the time we get into around uh, Thursday afternoon, this storm system and this whole area right here is the, what we call the cone of uncertainty. The, the storm could, with its center, veer over toward Texarkana or it could go just west of New Orleans. That's how much uncertainty there is with these forecasts. And that's not inaccuracy. That's not some government scientist sloughing off. That's normal. This right here gives you an idea as to where this thing could possibly go. So if you're anywhere between Houston and, say, around uh, Port MacArthur in that area, down to the southwest of New Orleans, this thing could still greatly affect that particular area with tons of rainfall. Now, as we get closer to around Friday, kicking into the holiday weekend. It looks like the depression by Friday afternoon, right in time for rush hour and getting people out of school, is going to be seeing the center of the depression making its way through east central Arkansas and slowly, and I mean very slowly, not having anything moving this thing on through. This thing is going to be moving, yes, but it's going to take a long time to actually do it. So it's going to take from Friday after about noon through Saturday at about noon as a post-tropical depression weakening over the land surface. Again, once these things hit land, they do a good job of losing about 50% of their power. Definitely not the case where Harvey has been concerned on something like this. But anywhere in this area is where that center of circulation can go. And that includes right over the Mid-South. And as long as the center is here, again, remember, uh, this is counterclockwise rotation with low pressure in the Northern Hemisphere. So this is going to draw up from the Gulf of Mexico an awful lot of moisture. And that's where we start seeing a really big increase in the chances of showers and thunderstorms taking place. Now, this is all a lot of information about where this thing is and where it's going. What's the impact going to be on us? I know a lot of people are wanting to ask that question. So here's what we're looking at for right now. Harvey, at the bottom of your screen, that's the rain going just north of Jackson, Mississippi, in the lower center portion of your screen. We are catching, again, an occasional shower or thunderstorm out there, but really not much more than that. As we get into the next couple of days, this is where Harvey starts to make its way to the north and to the east. And remember, it could go anywhere within that cone of uncertainty. There is going to be a minor front lingering around the area. You see that at the beginning of the animation right there and diminishing is just 
kind of a boundary in the atmosphere. Not much is going to be happening with that. Here's, again, what could happen. If that front sticks around, it could do a good job of helping Harvey, kind of like the bumpers on a pinball game, make its way over to the east a little farther instead of going all the way up to the north. Now, that's wishful thinking, something that could happen if that front is strong enough to stick around for the next couple of days. If it's not, then it's going to go a lot farther north on there. But notice again as that rain lifts up in the next about 48 hours, our chances for rain really start to increase as we go toward about midweek or so. Now, once again, the circulation is going to be there. Yes, the damaging winds are not. It may be gut but we're not looking at hurricane force winds, not even close to that. So for all the people who that I've seen today emailing me saying, well, I heard this and I heard that, check with the weather experts first and we'll let you know about what is going to be true on this and what is not. It is something that you need to examine and I'm glad you're asking questions. That's very cool, but just if you don't know the answer to something, don't go spreading it around until you get a confirmed answer on stuff like this, especially where it comes to things like this where people are nervous enough already given the bad news of about the last 72 hours. So we'll keep you updated on that. Here's what it looks like. This is a bar graph and on the center portion down at the uh, lowest level, if my fat fingers will actually do what they're supposed to do here. Uh, notice again that the bar graph shows going into around uh, Tuesday morning. We don't have a lot going on, but by the time the kids head to the school bus, that's where we see again the chances of showers and thunderstorms taking place. Rain in the green, thunder in the red, and we're talking about minimal chances, 10-20% into tomorrow, maybe as high as 30% uh, in some areas. That could be a bit of a problem at this point in time. Joy Tapper, a wedding Saturday. Uh, what are the chances we will not get rain? Uh, pretty low at this point, I would have to say, unfortunately here. There's a chance we won't get rain, Diane Wingo. There's a chance we won't get as much rain as what they're getting down in Texas, but we are going to start getting a little bit more. Now, keep your eyes on that bar graph again, starting at about Tuesday midnight through about the rest of the day on Tuesday. There will be more chances of rainfall. Look at what happens as I readjust the size on here, going down into around, say, Wednesday evening, that's where we start really ramping up the potential of rainfall because the moisture around the center of that circulation drawn up from the Gulf of Mexico is going to give us a lot more chances of rainfall starting on thir Wednesday evening, going through Thursday, all the way through Thursday during the day, right on in to Friday all the way on through, and a little bit of a reduction as we get into Saturday, but we could be looking at some pretty decent amounts of rainfall out there. Let's go ahead and take this forecast into the weekend and show you more about what we're looking. This is all available from the National Weather Service, free of charge. Your, your tax dollars, my tax dollars pay for it, so you'll be able to see a little bit more about what it looks like here. Now, the chances of rain and thunderstorms linger right into the weekend. We do not have anything really in the way of dry weather. I don't think we're talking about a total washout possibly. It's going to be coming and going possibly throughout the next few days, but it does show that potential of showers and thunderstorms going right on in through Saturday morning, Saturday evening, Saturday night, Sunday morning into around Sunday evening, and that's about where the forecast really runs out because we are at the beginning portion of the week. Anything else is going to be a little bit more on the inaccurate side because it's so far in advance, and that's as far as this forecast mechanism that we have here goes. So the chances of rain continuing, and again, starting about Wednesday night into Thursday, and it looks like all the way throughout the course of the weekend, what's left of Harvey is going to be visiting us and giving us a very good chance of a decent soaking. Add to that, there could be the possibility of some flash flooding out there. And severe weather doesn't look like it for right now, but the National Weather Service, again, with the current conditions of the soil, it's already saturated enough, which instead of the moisture absorbing into the soil because it's dry, instead of that, if the rain is already fallen and the soil's already saturated, it's going to hit the ground, run off, and collect in the ditches, streams, lakes, creeks, culverts wherever and that could cause again problems out there not as bad as we see in and around Houston over the last couple of days but we could see again uh, some localized flash flooding that's going to be the dangerous part as we get into the course of the next several days into the weekend so yes there is that potential of showers and thunderstorms no at this time to severe weather, but we will be watching that, and it will be fairly breezy out there as well. We could see some wind gusts out there topping at about maybe 15 to 25 miles per hour at times. 
Uh, decently breezy, but not doing too bad out across the Mid-South. Let's take a quick look at the forecast into tonight. And again, low temperatures into tonight. We'll be back into the upper 60s to lower 70s. High temperatures tomorrow, warm, but nowhere near late August normals. Only a few days we have spent above 90 degrees. Can you believe that for August? It's absolutely incredible uh, to think that we've never even topped 100 degrees in the month of August, but we still have a lot of September to go through. Chances of rain lingering into tomorrow for Tuesday. Fairly warm, fairly humid. Low temperatures Tuesday night will be back in the high 60s to around the lower 70s. And then chances of rainfall, again, really start to ramp up especially south of I-40. That's where that dark green color is. Uh, 40, 50, 60 percent from the metro area down to around Tupelo, Oxford, Clarksdale in that location. And that chance of rainfall goes right on into around Wednesday night, continues to overspread the area into Thursday so that everybody is standing a good chance of pretty good soaking. And for Thursday night, again, that chance goes up to about a 60 to around 90 percent chance of getting rainfall out there. Uh, how much are we looking looking at, that's still a little bit too far in advance. The computer models that forecast the amount of rainfall that we use here only go up to about the next 24 to 36 hours. Anything in the next few days, we have to use a different computer model, and I don't have that called up right now, and I'm already using enough bandwidth here to transmit an elephant every couple of seconds, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on that over the next several days, but just keep in mind that we could see slow travel due to rainfall, Gusty winds out there, yes, but nothing damaging from, again, a hurricane or a tropical storm. And we're going to see clouds and probably some slow travel out there. So some patience and some, again, extra eyes on the roadway, not fiddling with the radio, not fiddling with anything else, keeping an eye on what's going on out there. Uh, we could be seeing some very slow conditions for travel and quite possibly some accidents out there. So that's something else to think about into the next couple of days. Now, again, if you'd like to know more information, for those of you who are on Twitter and Periscope, please join me on my Facebook page. Got tons of weather information out there. It may seem ironic, but this is World Water Week, believe it or not, in cooperation with the United Nations Environmental Program, talking about the people around the world who do not have access to clean water like you or I do here in the United States. And there are hundreds of millions of people out there who do not have the clean water that we enjoy here. If you'd like to know more about about that and a ton of information in regards to what's going on out there, including some people who caught some very good captures of the crepuscular rays last week. David Holmes, this picture right here, my email only got this today. Apologies for sending that in kind of late, but what you're seeing is a shadow of a cloud beyond the horizon that is cast by the sun shining on that cloud and then casting that shadow right on in through the air. It's called a crepuscular ray, happens around sunrise or sunrise. Sunset. If it goes all the way across the sky, it's called an anti-crepuscular ray. No magic, no witchcraft or anything like that going on, just light and shadow, atmospheric optics. Pretty cool to take a look at something like that. If you saw something like that, please let us know. Tweet it to me or post it on my Facebook page. Information about interest in STEM and promoting classes like that for future mathematicians, engineers, chemists, and things like that at this time. And uh, oh, look, there we are. Me watching me watching me. That's pretty cool. Uh, also, information again throughout the course of the rest of the next several days about some of the great stories that are coming in from Pointer, P-O-Y-N-T-E-R, CBS News, a ton of information again about what's going on down in that direction, including tropical updates from the National Hurricane Center. That's all available on my Facebook page as well. Really interesting article here to think about. This is one of the ones uh, out there from Pointer talking about how journalists went to people in charge in Houston and asked for questions about infrastructure, flooding, preparedness, why things had not been done properly, and now those decisions are really coming back to haunt them. And it's a very interesting expose about what happened and why and why, as a society, we enjoy kicking the can down the roadway. We need to see our leaders doing a very good job of looking at long-term solutions. Scientists, engineers, mathematicians, people like that can help them understand that if they don't, but we need to stop worrying about the next generation or the one after that having to deal with these problems. This is a very serious situation that just happened in Houston, and we need to be able to be prepared for stuff like that. And this article brings home the idea that if we're not prepared for it, people are going to pay the price, whether it's Houston, Memphis, wherever. We need to be able to be prepared for this. We are not a preparatory society. We are a reactive society. 
society. We do a very good job of reacting to problems, and sometimes to a lot of people's cost, but we need to be prepared for stuff a lot more than we actually react to them. So a very nice article to take a look at there. CBS Evening News, tons of information available about that, and a great picture uh, here taken by a photographer about Houstonians helping other Houstonians, no matter who they are. Great to see that, as I say, on social media. Uh, nice little phrase from Shakespeare, so shines a good deed in a worry world. It's nice to be able to see that going on. Also, join me on Twitter for more information about this. Again, that's available at twitter.com slash aonic underscore WREG3 for more information on that. Join me bright and early tomorrow morning on AM730 Yahoo Sports Radio. If you can't join us there, uh, join us on talkbacklivenetwork.org. I'll tweet that and make certain everybody knows more about what's going on. And also don't forget about WREG.com slash weather where you can pick up our seven-day forecast. You can get more about Storm Tracker 3S. Uh, interactive radar is available there. Weather bug systems, it's all available at WREG.com slash weather. That's enough for tonight, I think. Looks like everybody's finally losing interest here and dropping off the page, but that's okay because we will have more information to talk about. Hopefully tomorrow morning we'll give you more information about that throughout the course of the rest of the next couple of days about where Harvey's going and what to expect. Thank you very much for all the kind comments on Facebook and also on Periscope and Twitter. And we'll have more details, of course, at wrag.com slash weather. Email me, let me know what you think. And if you have any questions or concerns, I would love to know about it. So go ahead and put that down in that direction. Donna Kelsey Faulkner, yes, very nice to see my name spelled correctly. Doesn't often happen a lot of the time, but it's okay. I'm used to it. That's why I have such a pet peeve about spelling everybody else's name and pronouncing it correctly. With a name like Onik, you would be incredibly surprised at how well that goes at restaurants and picking up stuff at the post office. It is very interesting there. Uh, thanks to everybody else out there. Victoria Fondren, thank you very much for the kind words. Bozo Wolfolk, thank you very much. Uh, Diane Wingo, thank you very much for stopping on by and the kind comments there. Stay tuned for more News Channel 3 off air and online on WREG.com slash weather. And stay tuned for more. Todd Demers will have more on the forecast on Daybreak. Jim Jaggers on News Channel 3 at 10. And of course, I'll be here with more information about weather overtime. Thanks for joining us and stay safe out there live and direct from somewhere in Memphis. I'm Meteor Meteorologist Austin Onik with our latest edition of News Channel 3's Weather Overtime.